Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dinosaur Channel. This is your channel on YouTube for all things dinosaur and prehistoric. Today we're going to be learning about the Dimorphodon, but before we do, I want to remind you guys to subscribe and turn on those notifications so don't miss a single video because we're going to be covering every single dinosaur and prehistoric animal from the Jurassic World and Park movie franchise series. Hit us up with a dinosaur size thumbs up, comment down below a dinosaur that you would like to see in the future, and let's dive right into everyone's little fly, little weird flying thingy. The Dimorphodon. My whole set almost just broke. The Dimorphodon. So what does Dimorphodon mean? Dimorphodon means two form tooth. And that's because this thing had two different types of teeth in its mouth. We're going to start this off right with a side note. This is not a dinosaur. The Dimorphodon, unfortunately, was not a dinosaur. It was a medium-sized pterosaur. Pterosaur is the kind of family name for these flying reptilian creatures that used to exist back in the Mesozoic era. They existed from the Triassic all the way to the Cretaceous, and the Dimorphodon was in that group. Pterosaurs in popular media are often referred to as flying dinosaurs, but that's just not true. They are not part of the same family, as well as the Various animals like plesiosaurs and mosasaurs are always looped in, but as we've covered before in the mosasaur episode, not a dinosaur. These are aquatic reptiles. We have flying reptiles, two different animal groups. But with that being said, side note over, let's jump into everything about the Dimorphodon because you want to know about the Dimorphodons. So where and when did this flying reptile live? Well, it lived about 175 to 160 million years ago in Europe, most notably in the United Kingdom on a place called the Jurassic Coast. Everybody knows about it. Lots of famous dinosaur fossils and prehistoric creatures have come out of the Jurassic Coast. I was actually lucky enough to visit it one time when I was down there. Amazing place. So what do you want to know about the Dimorphodon? You want to know what it looks like? To be honest, this little toy depiction of the Dimorphodon from Jurassic World Mattel's little toy line. It's not the worst depiction of a Dimorphodon. It's actually pretty spot on when it comes to a lot of the features of the Dimorphodon. The Dimorphodon was about two feet long, weighed about two pounds, and had a wingspan of about four feet. These are all estimations, by the way. Some of them ranged a little higher and some of them ranged a little lower, but it had, it was about the size of a crow. It wasn't too much bigger than a crow. One thing about the Dimorphodon that was kind of strange is it had an oddly really, really, really big head with two different types of teeth, hence the name that it gets. It had longer ones, presumably intended for snagging its prey in the front and shorter, flatter ones in the back. These were presumably for growing grinding this prey into easily swallowed up mush. And as we mentioned before, this is where it gets its name for those two different types of teeth, Dimorphodon. And as well, there are these things called pycnofibers that are found across the pterosaur family. These are kind of known as like early types of feathers or hairs. These were found on certain animals, similar to pterodactyl and pteranodon, other animals like this, but the Dimorphodon has no proof of having any of those that we've been able to find so far. All right, so how did this beautiful Dimorphodon get famous. Sorry to break it to you, but it didn't really. We're off the main section of Jurassic dinosaurs and creatures now. So all these other animals that you're going to find that we cover in the future aren't really that famous, which is kind of what makes them really cool. When it comes to being featured in TVs, movie shows, books, whatever, Dimorphodon hasn't really had much of an appearance. It's kind of looped in with other dinosaurs and pterosaurs in books and coloring books and cartoons and stuff like that. as just a little thing that flies around, never really has a spotlight on it until 2015 when it made its big break in Jurassic World, the original movie. It was housed in the giant bird cage, the aviary on Jurassic World, where it was housed with other pteranodons. Super cool breakout scene where we get to see the pteranodon and the Dimorphodon attack visitors across Jurassic World. This flying reptile wreaked havoc across Isla Nublar and we got to see it attack people and we got to see really, really great depictions of it. And this is awesome. It looks really, really cool. Besides that, it's also been featured in some Jurassic Park video games and counterparts like that, like the Jurassic World Alive app, where you could have an augmented reality dinosaur flying reptile experience with the Dimorphodon and the Jurassic World toy line, as I showed you before. So let's jump right into the behavior and diet of the Dimorphodon because it gets kind of interesting. So our knowledge of the Dimorphodon is limited. We have to estimate and guess about a lot of things like it comes to with a lot of prehistoric creatures and dinosaurs and other animals like the Dimorphodon, but it is guesstimated and estimated that it perhaps mainly inhabited coastal regions and might have had a very varied diet. Some people suggest that it might have only eaten insects and others suggest that it might have only eaten fish and some even suggest that it might have eaten mammals. So it's hard to really tell Usually we find with these pterosaurs, with these flying reptiles, that a lot of them fed on fish just because it was easy prey for them to snag up. Because of the different types of teeth that this animal had, it probably gives us an education that it, it ate a varied diet. It probably didn't stick to one thing, like only fish, only small mammals, or only insects. 
it's probably fair to assume that it ate a mix of all of them because of those different teeth but obviously these are just guesstimates these are just guesses and we'll never really probably know until we find some bones of animals inside of a dimorphodon but that ladies and gentlemen is the end of your episode all about the beautiful wonderful dimorphodon i personally love this animal i think it's so cool and if you ever see depictions of it kind of sitting down it looks a little bit like a puffin almost the skull and the face is so interesting so really really cool to cover this animal i'm very excited and very happy about it but we have so much more to cover so make sure that you subscribe with those notifications turned on so you don't miss a single dinosaur or prehistoric and animal episode on this youtube channel the dinosaur channel you don't miss a single one if you would like to support this channel please send us some money down in our paypal link below it will be in the description if you want to support this channel also leave us a dinosaur sized thumbs up and let us know what animal or dinosaur you want us to see cover in the future your next animal is going to be the pachycephalosaurus and i am so excited because it's one of my favorite dinosaurs and we'll see you then goodbye